Wow, hello internet. Um, today, I'm going down memory lane. I'm going back to the place where I grew up. Yeah, I know it seems a bit strange. It's a bit of a weird video. But I grew up in a little place called Maxi. And I'm just about now to go past my house. Let me show you. So yeah, this is the place I grew up. It brings back some happy memories. <laughs> I've still got the pipes on the outside that used to freeze every single year. And the garden all seemed very big when I was there. It looks a lot smaller now, bizarre. Yeah, downstairs toilet. <laughs> yeah, the front garden, oh my God. I rebuilt uh, many a car in that area. And um, yeah, <laughs> rebuilt many a car out here as well. Um, it's a bit bizarre being back. Um, we did have a park before, but all these metal railings are new and all the play park is, is pretty much new. Uh, it always seemed so big here when I was younger. Uh, and the house seemed so big as well. <laughs> and uh, for those watching the video that grew up around me, you'll know that that used to be my bedroom up there. I used to climb out that window and used to basically climb up on the gutter, climb up on the roof, and where that aerial is just there, used to be an old CB aerial, what they call a Sigma 4, massive red big thing, 18 meters, no, 18 feet high. And uh, we pretty much carried it up there when I was a kid, and pretty much any time it needed adjusting, um, <laughs> used to climb out the window, climb up the roof and go and adjust it. Yeah, some happy memories around this place. Some very happy times. Now another interesting place I used to come to when I was a kid, um, and one of the highlights of Maxi, was the, the old mill. Um, a place that I believe even today does grind um, flour by stone. Um, this is one of the grinding stones, obviously an old one. Um, but basically, uh, it's an old water mill. Um, I think if we go around here, you can actually see the water wheel. Um, it's been a few years, I'll be honest. Um, no, nah, you can't. I think it's through that door. Um, actually through that one there, if I recall rightly. But basically, yeah, in there, there's a big old water wheel. And that water wheel drives the stones that grind the flour. Um, and obviously the wastewater comes out here. And we used to have open days here. And uh, was allowed to go in and have a look. Um, probably health and safety now wouldn't let you anywhere near the place. But uh, yeah, I think certainly a very interesting place when you're a kid and and probably one of the things that got me interested a little bit in uh, yeah, mechanical engineering and how things used to be done years ago but uh, yeah there you go there's Maxi Mill and the plaque on the wall JM 1779 it's not in bad shape, is it, for such an old building? Now, believe it or not, another one of my haunts as a kid <laughs> was this place. Um, obviously, coming from a small village, you know, you had your usual weddings and things going on here, but even, uh, <laughs> strangely enough as kids, we decided at Halloween, it'd be great to come down here in the dark and um, <laughs> stupidly lay on tombstones and frighten the life out of us. Um, so yeah, even this place has got some memories. Um, obviously there's quite a few people that uh, I grew up with and people of the village that uh, are actually buried here. Um, I'm just looking around some of the tombstones actually and basically just seeing what kind of names we got on them and how many people I recognise. Um, Parker, definitely a name I recognise, yeah. Oh, Nick Parker, my god, yeah. Um, he actually moved into my old house that we saw earlier. Um, bless him, died quite young as well. Um, yeah, I can see Brian Dolby there as well, who uh, used to work in a place where I'm going to show you in a little while, um, the Tarmac Quarry. So um, yeah, it's it's quite oh Flo as well. Yeah, Flo, I think that's his mother. It's, um, <laughs> it's crazy, I know, and probably a little bit morbid to walk around here, but I find these places quite fascinating. They're they're part of village life. 
and you know if you live in a small village at some point you are going to come and frequent some sort of thing going on in the church like I say whether it's a wedding may even be a funeral um, I'm not a big church goer I'll be totally honest but I do admire the buildings and uh, yeah, this one's been around for a long long time Now another place I used to spend time in as a kid, um, I had a friend who lived in this building here and that is the old coach house and uh, again old buildings supposed to have ghosts and everything in them um, but there's lots of secret passages in that building which is very bizarre and there is a rumour that there's actually a tunnel that comes into the church from there and goes to the old vicarage inside the, uh, the main village as well. Now a little bit of history, um, obviously this place, if I scan around slightly, seems to be in the middle of nowhere. But apparently, um, when the village was built many, many years ago, um, everything revolved around the church. But um, obviously when the Black Plague hit, not Covid, the Black Plague, um, the whole village basically got burnt down to try and stop the plague. And obviously the church wasn't burnt down for obvious reasons and it looks like the old coach house survived as well and that's about the only buildings around here if i just scan over there the, the newer part of maxi as such um, begins over there so um yeah interesting times so it's something that's just brought a memory back this is the old what they call peterborough quarries and um, strangely enough there's lots of lakes behind there and behind me as well and this is where my father started working <laughs> many 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 years ago yeah strange and uh, we're going to drive by in a minute some newer houses but his cottage used to basically be right next to it so this is going to be a quick drive by but his cottage used to be along where these I think 1970s built houses are now how bizarre is that now when he was at the church I mentioned the old vicarage and there's suspected to be a tunnel from the church to the vicarage and, and this is it now I think it's, um, it's probably turned back into a house now but it used to be a bed and breakfast when I was in the village um, so there you go there's the old vicarage there and the new one was built right next to it and this place now that's now a residence obviously as they all are was uh, the old chapel and here's the village community centre I spent many a happy day in there as a kid growing up going to parties and Christmas events and DJing in there as well for, for many a year. Yeah, it's changed a little bit uh, behind, but the front facade here is pretty much the same as it's been for a long, long time. So another one of my memories, and unfortunately we can't go down there now because it's um, been the land's been turned over to uh, the, well, the people around it, basically. Um, I know most of Maxi, <laughs> to be honest. So this lane used to take you down to the old tarmac quarry, which was originally Hoverman and um, yeah through all here um, again it's private land now so you can't go down there is all the lakes that we dug well all the pits that we dug that were transformed into very pretty lakes and you could go fishing in there and there was water sports going on down the bottom end uh, I think the Stanford Sailing Club used to be there years ago um, but like I say now it's private land um, you can see this row of conifers as well and I'm just going to walk around slightly um, I'm not going to go down there, but um, ironically as well, this land here, which is now, as you can see, a big housing estate, um, was another one of my jobs. <laughs> In fact, my very first job. This used to be an industrial estate, and it used to have, well, just here, the first one, uh, there was a, a big concrete car ramp just there, or a lorry ramp, and there was about six or seven units there. And I used to work for a guy called David Almy. <laughs> yeah, a very pleasant guy. Um, just didn't go near him if he was angry shouting and a hammer in his hand because you'd probably find you um, ducking it. Um, <laughs> very angry man. But um, yeah, he worked, uh, well, he, he had a business called Maxi Coach Works and that is where I first uh, started working. I was a panel beater and sprayer and commercial sprayer as well and then when that went bankrupt he also owned a unit next to it called Peterborough Sailplanes uh, which used to repair gliders and that's where I ended up working. Yep, and as you can see now Perkins Lane is just basically lots of houses. No more industrial units. It's um, I hope you can hear me through the wind and the noise but basically what happened is um, 
they all burnt down. Hmm. Yeah. And these ended up here. Anyway, and one of the places I had to visit was here. And now, it doesn't look much, but this was my youth. This is where everybody congregated on an evening. And, um, yeah, the old bush shelter used to be the place where, <laughs> where the action used to happen. Uh, there used to be a bench there years ago, but that's gone now, which is a shame. And um, up here, mm, I don't know if it's ever cleared, but we had a hole just there. <laughs> a hole was created. I don't know who cut it, actually, but the hole was created, and there's some eaves up there. And we used to get in there, and um, I don't know if they're still there, but um, there used to be some Party 7 tins up there. <laughs> many many moons ago oh it always did go on in here it was crazy and uh, a friend of mine simon used to live just behind us in there and uh, there there is uh, well there's a tree planted there again now um that used to be the crossing tree many years ago it was a big old i think an, an oak tree and um yeah that fell down <laughs> it was very unsafe and when any wind happened it would basically fall down um, so yeah, they've got a new tree there now, all nicely decorated, and uh, yeah, this is the, the other end to where I used to live, so I used to live right down the bottom there, which we just come from, and um, yeah, this path here, there's <laughs> some funny stories about this, it was quite a new path when I was a kid, and it was uh, the place we used to skate and skateboard up, um, most interestingly, um, we were buggers in the winter time, because we used to um, get cold water from Simon's house, which is just behind there, and we used to um, create slides here. Um, God bless the pensioners. Nobody actually broke a hip, but we was very lucky, I think. Um, there you go. So yeah, I lived down there. Used to come up here every night to the old bush shelter. And again, anybody that's watching these, uh, that's a, a maxi mafia person, will remember this. I actually cut behind it now. It used to be full of stingers years ago. Another place that's been here since the dawn of time as well, Shaw's Coaches. As long as I can remember, there's always been a Shores Coaches in Maxi. Hasn't changed much at all. Now, this place, which is looking very lovely now with its newish thatched roof, um, this is where we used to go and spend our money as kids. That used to be the old village shop. And then obviously when we got older, that became more interesting. <laughs> the old bluebell. So I'll be honest on being a little bit sneaky. Um, I mentioned Tarmac Road Stone and originally the old quarry was the place I started working and um, I ended up working before I actually went on to Pastors New in this place here. Now we're going down the Hall Road and um, I've come down here many a time but not in the past 15 maybe even more years to be honest. This is where Tarmac Quarry is. Yep, and that is a place where I used to work. Amazing, hey? It has changed a little bit since I last came down here, I'll be honest. In fact, it's changed a lot. <laughs> yep, and a lot of that area you can see over there, well, they dug most of that. Yeah, I'll post a picture in. He's doing it with an RB38 and uh, an NCK rapier. And some backhoe loaders as well. So yeah, most of that there. It's all back to arable land there, low level arable land. But um, yeah, most of that over there I dug. And most of this road as well, um, that we're going down now, I, um, I provided the gravel for. <laughs> So we, uh, we took it from the old quarry as we was closing it down and uh, basically laid it down here. And one of the memories I have of this, <laughs> which is, um, it's funny looking back now, I probably wasn't at the time. Um, where we're cutting into the road just up here, because obviously this was, um, this was all arable land at one point and we had to cut into the road. Uh, it wasn't me doing it, I hasten to add, but where we cut into the road just here, um, underneath there, unbeknown to anybody, even the surveyors, um, is the phone lines. And the phone lines for Maxi, and the phone lines for Etten, and pretty much um, 
15,000 phone lines and they were all chopped through. Well, back home again after my little trip down memory lane and one of the um, negatives about <laughs> living in the village and working in a quarry <sighs> I forgot how much this stuff really messes your car up oh well let's get a clean